Greetings, YouTube. This is Yvette, and welcome to my channel where we are usually fasting. We are definitely defeating the enemy. We're taking our rightful authority over the enemy through Jesus. <laughs> Excuse me. We are taking dominion over the earth. We're walking in our calling. This is not the channel where we play church. This is the channel where we step and walk all over Satan, okay? Um, I, it has been a long time since I've posted a video. I um, haven't did a video since the first part of October. I went to Texas to get my godmother and moved her here um, with us. And so she's getting settled in. And at the same time, was remodeling. You guys, some things happen. Oh, my, my, my. I came down with a um, um, irritation in my throat, which eventually developed into bronchitis which I've never had before in my life. But here's what was going on. Remember I was doing communion every single day? Well, when I went to Texas, because I couldn't travel with certain things, I just was like, oh, I'm gonna be gone a couple days. I just won't take it. I immediately was sick, <coughs> excuse me. And I'm still dealing with a little bit the tail end of it. I didn't really have a voice. I coughed nonstop on my flight. They had to give me hot water. And somebody else gave me um, Ricola throat lozenges um, or cough drops, I think they are. Uh, and that helped me. But as soon as I didn't have a Ricola, back to coughing. As soon as I didn't have something hot, back to coughing. I was coughing so much that I started, um, I mean, I would have these horrible coughs that went on and on and on to the part, point where it was almost like to the point of throwing up. Then when I came back from Texas, I was like throwing up, coughing so bad that I threw up. My ribs hurt so bad. And uh, in the meantime, I had not done the communion. But because I was overtaken by the illness, I didn't even pay attention to not doing the uh, communion because I was coughing so much. I could not stop coughing. Every five minutes, I was coughing for very long periods of time. Um, Eventually, I, I mean, I took some natural herbal supplements and I do have a natural path and uh, that didn't work. So eventually she put me on antibiotics because it got worse and there was a concern that perhaps it could develop into pneumonia. So I took the antibiotics and I did a seven day bout with that. You guys, it has been nothing but crazy. There were so many things that were going on. One of the other things is that I brushed my teeth with uh, rosemary oil and baking soda. Rosemary oil, I didn't realize, was so powerful on teeth. Not only does it clean your teeth, disinfect your breath, but it is um, it helps with tooth sensitivity. I didn't know that my teeth were even sensitive, not as sensitive as they were. So when I left for Texas, I did not bring my bottle of rosemary essential oil. So, But I did take clove oil because it was in a like a half ounce bottle, and that can go on the plane. Well, I'm there in Texas just a couple of days, immediately I was met with, um, my teeth became very, very sensitive. The clove oil will disinfect your mouth, but somebody told me that that helps with toothache. Eh, no. Rosemary oil is the one that works. So I'm brushing my teeth while I'm, the whole time I'm out of town with the rosemary oil. And of course, we're, we, I flew in to get her and then drove her car and her here. Um, and so of course we stopped each night because she couldn't travel as much. I mean, I, I like to drive. <clears throat> we were making frequent stops and uh, then the car started having some issues. We were going 80 miles an hour. That was the speed limit, but the car at times could only go 30, 40 miles. It was really being pushed. So it was no nothing but a miracle from God who touched the car because I'm telling you, us two could not fix the car, um, couldn't do nothing but pray. And I think I was so tired and just, just tired when we were about 300 miles from home. Um, we had a low pressure um, message on the tire. And I'm like, God, I don't know if, I don't even know if the tire is on there, if it's on the wheel, because I can't feel it. We get into a gas station, get gas. I put air in the tire. I took my time at this particular station and just, of course, I'm coughing the whole time. So I'm traveling with lots of throat lozenges or cough drops, Hall's cough drops. And I kept buying those at the convenience store, which was really expensive, but it was necessary for me. When we got in the car, 
I, you know, I just pray, Lord, you got to do something. Because what we found out is that her insur- um, tow coverage on her car, they'll tow her the first 100 miles or first 25 miles. And then it's $5 a mile after that. So we were going to be paying $1,500 for this tow. And I'm like, we going, well, we need to get a tow. No, we are not towing no car. We're going to keep it pushing. So we left this particular gas gas station. I'm going to tell you guys, it was nothing but supernatural. God doing stuff and stepping up when we needed him. That car just automatically started going 80 miles an hour. We were able to travel the speed limit of the road all the way back home and made it just fine. And it was nobody but the hand of God. But getting back here, I was so under the weather. And then my godmother, I think the change in climate for her was also difficult because she was ill. And her medication, some of the medications she take ran out. It's just the enemy was trying to do a number on us. And I will tell you, she's a prayer uh, warrior. She's saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. She's a, a evangelist. I mean, preaches. I mean, just she's just another spiritual person in the home. And the enemy doesn't want that. He was trying to take us both out. <clears throat> which didn't matter because the Lord is dealing and working with us and whatnot. But you guys, I have had such a bout this month. And then um, the beginning of this month, November, uh, my homeless people, remember I feed homeless people. So when I was out of town, I let them know, hey, you guys, I'm going to be gone for a week um, and I'll be back. And then when I came down with the bronchitis, I couldn't go out. And I told them, yes, you guys, my doctor says I can't go out. And they were like, yeah, take care of yourself. You know, they know about being sick. Anyway, I didn't see them for a week. I came back. Some of them died. So over the past week, three people that I fed on a regular basis, all of them OD'd on some type of drug. And um, it happens all the time. And, it, you know, overdosing happens all the time. And uh, I was not aware of it because I didn't know them before. But now I know them and I've come to have them in my life and I see them and I touch base with them and the things going on in their life and some of the thing, you know, stuff we have to pray about. And I started talking to them about drugs and taking drugs and how it takes a toll on the body. And the Lord let me know. I mean, I just did not feel good this week. And Friday I found out another person had died and it was just too much for me, you know, um, and there was a one girl in particular, she was 23 years old and I always feed her and she's always trying to find my truck. And when she saw my truck, oh, I'm so glad I got your truck. She was always so happy to see me. She died of an overdose at age 23 and she was just a cute young girl, but just wrapped up in the wrong thing. So the Lord has let me know that, you know what, um, you, we have to step up what you're doing, you know, the, to get the message out to them because all of them, and, it, and as I began talking to them about, you know, the different ones that had died, I find out that the ones that I feed as regulars, they're all doing drugs. There's a reason why I'm up at three o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning, or I'm out here. Really? Your body wasn't made for that. So I have to treat them as though every single time I see them, that this is their last, that this is my last time seeing them. And I'm gonna start telling them this. I'm gonna tell them that. That you guys know what? I'm so concerned about the OD overdosing um, that I have to treat you like this is the last time I'm going to see you because you're going to keep using drugs. I don't know what else to say. I didn't get to say bye. So I'm just going to say bye now. If this is how you choose to treat your body, the temple that God gave you, and somehow the message of salvation has got to go out to them. So I know that I do have a message of salvation on the back of my car, but when I lift up my gate, you don't see that. It's uh, up, you know, in the stars. So I'm going to get myself a banner and I've got to do something and it has to be fast. Um, I did get special prayer tonight at church. It's Shabbat and my pastor prayed for me and Lord God, the Holy Spirit came down. Yes. And blessed me. I know that God is with me and directing my path. So we're doing Torah studies right now and we're on the part about Abraham. Uh, We just did Genesis 12 through 17. And one of the things about Abraham is Abraham was told to leave his family, leave your country, leave your people, your your language, leave all of that and you go. And he had to use, uh, stand on faith and trust God for whatever he needed. And that's the place we have to be. 
Let go of everybody and everything and just do the work that God has for you. Do that. Bless other people. If what you're doing doesn't bless anybody else but you and your family, you're not doing the will of God. I'm telling you that right now. Every aspect of our life should be touching somebody else. We should, God blesses us with enough for us and enough for other people. So I just had this epitome, you know, dealing with just the deaths and just seeing those people on a weekly basis. And now I'm not going to see you. And you were young, a, a young life wasted wasted and then some people are older and they're doing drugs and because they don't shoot it in their veins they think they go make it you're not going to live long like that your heart can't keep doing that but they don't want to think about it because when i started talking about it well i don't want to talk about that no that's what i want to talk about because god didn't make you for that you know and if i'm bringing food out guess what you're gonna hear the gospel i have to step it up you know and sometimes i'm in a hurry and i got to get to the different camps and i can only deal with people the ones that have uh, a need or express a need. And sometimes I share with folks, but I got to change it because I'm feeding a bunch of drug addicts. That's what I'm doing. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> In any case, um, I certainly um, welcome those of you who have subscribed to the channel. I'm back. And thank you for being patient with me. And yes, I have not stopped doing what God has asked me to do. But I do think that I'm going to continue doing uh, communion because I know that there's a supernatural blessing when you do communion, when you remember that the Lord has died for you. Because when we take communion, it's not just that we remember, you, you take Jesus. And when he said, you will do, indeed eat my flesh and you will indeed drink of my um, blood, it was that we were going to have him in our vein, running through our veins, his body, a part of our body, him in us. And when that happens, you begin to be like the Lord. And so there are some things that are very frustrating to me. I don't like to hear um, <clears throat> people who submit to the enemy, you know, and talk about how, oh, God, the devil's doing this, devil's doing this. Nuh-uh. All day long, I'm victorious. And somebody was telling me that because I was saying that, no, you ain't handling it right. You you get up against the fence, you call on Jesus. Oh, sister, you need to be humble. You need, you need humility humility and fighting the enemy are you nuts are you nuts the lord has already given us authority over the enemy i'm not humbling myself before no devil i'm not scared of no devils they know who i am but anyway um and then just hearing um or the passiveness or people who oh you guys i hate people who are fake fake and like you under slain under the spirit or fake and like you uh, walk in with the Lord and you're not, I, that I don't like, because like, look, the enemy knows when you fake, he knows he's watching you. He can see when you're playing them little games, like, yeah, you making it look like you walking upright and this and that going on and ain't nothing happened to you. That's how you acted. But the enemy knows you ain't got no power behind you. Cause I don't play that. I don't play that. This channel don't play that. We don't have time to make, try and make other people think we walking upright. Mm -mm. Because testing time comes, believe me. Anyway, as we're dealing with Abraham and the life of Abraham, my life is following that pattern because you are going to be called out. Trust me, he's going to pull you out and he's going to put you um, to the test. The Lord's going to put you to the test like he tested Abraham. He's going to test us. He's going to test me. Yvette, really? Are you, have you really given up everybody? I don't care. Even my child. Uh, we're going to get to the part where we get to... Um, Abraham sacrificing Isaac. And every time we do this portion, Abraham's life and his relationship with Isaac reminds me of me and my daughter. I love her so dearly, but I don't love her and I don't put her before God. And even though it would hurt me, you know, to have to let her go, or if, if the Lord said to me, go sacrifice my daughter. And that I've had that conversation with the Lord and I've been letting her go because I don't let her grow up. She's so cute, you guys. She's a beautiful daughter. Couldn't ask for a better child. Um, and God is letting me know, you know, uh, put, put me first and teach her to follow my ways, to follow me, to learn of me. And she's coming to Torah study with us. She's coming to story, Torah study with me on Friday nights. And I'm so thankful to have her do that. And so that's what God wants us to do, to pass down what he gives us. So words of wisdom for me, okay? It, the summary is please do communion day and night or not, not necessarily day and night. You could do it in the morning and you do it in the evening. I'm going to 
try and do it at least once a day. Okay. And then two, look, Genesis 12 and three. Oh, no, no, 12 and two, one. When the Lord calls Abraham out, you guys just be that way. And I think it's the first verse or the second verse. Um, step out on, for, on the Lord and step out in faith and trust him. Be like Abraham. These people in the Bible, these patriarchs, they're there for us to see that, you know, hey, this is what God requires. And look, he blesses you. Honestly, your life will pattern them. Don't throw away the Old Testament. It's very vital for us. And then we're going to talk about how all the nations and all the people on the earth are blessed through Abraham. That it, when John, uh, Revelation 7, 9, when he saw a number in heaven that no, that, that could not be numbered, he saw people of every tongue, every nation, every kindred, every peoples, every type of person he saw in heaven. So I know those of you who think that God's only coming back for Israel, but Israel was to be a light, the light and show everybody else who the world, who, who the true God was. That's what their job was. And to win souls. That's what they were to do. People join them. And so that's what we're to do. But John saw that just like all the nations were prophesied in Genesis, blessed of the Lord, blessed from Abraham. Those people, all those nations are in uh, heaven. John, John saw them. And it's a number that could not be counted, like the dust of the earth and the or the stars in the sky. God told Abraham, if you could count the sand of the, of, of, of the sea, then so can your offspring be counted. Can you count the sand? Of course not. Anyway, thank you, Lord. And I'll continue praying for you guys. Listen, turn on notifications. My apologies for not being faithful and keeping on our video. We also had the enemy attacking our internet. So the enemy is trying not to let this channel go forth, but uh, we're going to do it anyway. Okay. So I'm going to make sure I upload this one because I did do another video and I didn't upload it because my internet is acting up, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to a part of the house that does have good connection and upload the video. Pray for me. And I am praying for you guys. You guys, we can do this. Okay. We can make it. I don't mind you submitting comments. Um, especially when we need to help each other because we can do this. Honestly, we're on the winning side. All right, you guys take care and Lord bless you.